Ferrari was made with my old Meccano set. It took a week and a lot of swearing. This Bugatti Royale was made from scratch. It took 10 years and cost 1.6 million pounds. Hang on. 1.6 million pounds for a Bugatti Royale? It's a bargain. The Royale was the Italian Ettore Bugatti's masterpiece, the most extravagant car of a very extravagant era. It cost around 6,500 pounds when a house was yours for 500. It was called La Royale because it was only to be sold to royalty. 25 were planned, but the Depression saw production stop at number six. They all survive. One of them fetched nine million pounds at auction. This, though, is number seven, completed in 1999. It is, of course, a replica, but don't imagine for a minute that it's some glass fiber kit car. It looks like aluminium. It feels like aluminium. And it is. Aluminium. I can also assure you that there are absolutely no four-door VW bits. It's an exact copy, right down to the tiniest detail, of the 1931 La Royale Coupe de Ville Napoleon. And I mean an exact copy. It's the work of Tom Wheatcroft, ex-builder and now owner of the Donington Race Circuit and its Grand Prix collection, where this car is kept. Ten years ago, he saw a Royale auction for eight million pounds and, being the highly astute businessman that he is, thought to himself, Oh, blimey, I could build one far cheaper than that. So he did. Drive on. I think I'll have a word with my driver. Down the speaker tube. Uh, Tom, um, I wouldn't want to appear rude, but are you a bit mad? No, some think I'm mad, some think I'm e eccentric. Why? Why did you do it? The American sent his car over to the museum at Donington here, and he got it, he got it here ready for sale, and it fetched eight million pounds. So I thought, well, I'll build one. I'm not going to pay that amount of money for one. And I don't blame him. But building your own Royale is a huge undertaking. It took Tom and his son nearly two years to research the details of the car. For instance, there are 980 rivets on the bonnet. Tom drew on the skills of those people who maintain Britain's reputation as the workshop of the world. Blokes in sheds. Blokes who will knock up a radiator for £6,500, or make wheels for £12,000 each, or give you 16 coats of 1930s cellulose paint. Your bill? £72,000. But it's the cynic that knows the price of everything. Let's consider instead the immaculate detailing on these period instruments. Oh, and by the way, if you're going to recreate a 1930s interior, remember to stuff the seats with horsehair. I bought a model. And I got talking to the model maker and said, well, where did you get the drawings from to do this? And he got chatting away, says, I've got all the original ones. Within three minutes after that, I'd got them. I was told I couldn't build a Bugatti Royale, but if you set your heart on doing something, see it right through and do it. Good for you, sir. Yes, <laughs> keep going. You have to be in the mood of some big numbers when considering the Royale. And I don't just mean high prices. This is an enormous car. It's 20 feet long. The wheelbase alone is over 14 feet. And there are seven feet of bonnet in front of the hapless driver here. A man who, you will notice, has to sit outside. Well, they knew their place in those days. It weighs the thick end of three tons. Blimey, I hope it's got a decent engine. Well, that should do it. A 12.7 litre straight eight. It develops 345 brake horsepower, which is quite a lot, at 2,000 revs, which is not much more than tick over on your car. It'll do 130 miles an hour, apparently. So before we go any further, we better have a look at the brakes. Look, cable operated, like a bicycle. No thanks. Hang on, what am I saying? This is a Bugatti Royale. I'm never going to get another chance, am I? Right, let's see what the old uh, new girl will do on the road. 
This may be the Chatsworth house of motor cars, but the servants' quarters are cramped and drafty, as you'd expect. And the gears are all the wrong way round, and you need to double declutch perfectly. Like that. Right, here comes my first ever bend in La Royale. Let's see what it's like. Steering's like a sluice gate. Must be about 20 turns lock to lock. But it feels very, very cumbersome, even in this fairly slow bend. There's no lateral support at all in the seats. It's worse than a larder I once drove. Very, very regal, though. Very, very special. It's remarkable. The view down the bonnet is just terrific. It's like looking out over the roof of a cathedral. In fact, it's just remarkable, full stop. A fitting testimony to Britain's cottage car industry and a monument to Tom's bloody-mindedness. If I have my chauffeur's hat on, I'd take